This is Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. We enthuse, we energize, we inspire, and we empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes in BW and beyond. Dumela and welcome as we say here in Botswana to another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom Podcast. Mumpuli Giluruma Mohobe here, your host. Um, as we get further and further into year number five of this show, I get more and more excited as we are an earth entrepreneurs and uh, we have two categories as you know. We have aspiring entrepreneurs and we have accomplished entrepreneurs and I'm delighted to inform you that today we definitely have an accomplished entrepreneur who's been out there for more than three decades and he'll introduce himself momentarily. We know him only as Webster of Webster uh, Webs Motors. So, welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Before we start our conversation, dear viewer, let me ask you to do the honorable thing, which is to strike the, um, that subscribe button as well as to, to put your button on the notification bell. Please, we need those uh, for purpose of managing the algorithms, for purpose of giving you more great, powerful, original content here on Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. So let me welcome you to the studio, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Would you care to just tell them about yourself, a short CV, so to speak, academics, and what you are doing now? Okay. My name is Webstam Saimura. Um, born in Zimbabwe. Uh, did my primary, secondary education in Zimbabwe. And instead of going to Zimbabwe, University of Zimbabwe, I ran away to Botswana at the age of 21. Oh. And um, when I got into Botswana, I had no money. I, between me and everything else, I think I had 45 puller. But I didn't want to work for, for anybody when I came here. So I looked for opportunities to start something. And I found an opportunity in the, in the form of auto body repairs and refinishing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then how does one start a business? Um, uh, with 45 Pula and mm -hmm. with no friends, no, the, the language is completely different. Everything is different. But I, I did it. Um, somewhere in the late, in the 80s, eh? Uh, um, in, in 1990, 1992. In the early 90s. Yeah. Early 90s, yeah. yes. No problem. It was in the early, early 90s. Mm. Yeah, and um, well, I started uh, the business webs motors uh, through, you know, uh, going to uh, people and say, look, we can make great things out of what you already have. Uh, you may know um, Etienne and Marietta Bosch. Mm -hmm. Yes. The yeah, that's yeah. where... There's a lot of controversy there. Yes, there was a lot of controversy, mm -hmm. but uh, Webs Motors was born from that place. Mm -hmm. we, we made... My first gig was to uh, uh, persuade them to, uh, to, uh, to accept, to change their fleet from multiple colors, which mm -hmm. was red, white. These guys were wearing yellow overalls. So I say, you can make your trucks also corporate mm -hmm. to fit your corporate colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, that Africana said, look, you are such a That's young... That's Mr. Bosch. Mr. Bosch, yeah, yes. For those who don't know, Marietta Bosch was unfortunately hanged for a murder conviction. And uh, it was a very, very emotional time for the country and for everybody. True. But... Uh, but so you met the husband that's right before he he, he uh, before they linked up with the with the wife uh, they were already married mm -hmm. yeah they were already married but i i communicated with the husband mm -hmm. and um i persuaded them to give me the first truck to change the color mm -hmm. and because i didn't have money i was buying liguinha in the evening and um meet for Tupula every <laughs> evening. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's how when I uh, then uh, made uh, this proposal, the guy said, look, how are you going to do it? I said, you will have to advance me. I charged them 5,000 Pula mm. to do a truck, a whole truck. To and do what? They, to, to repaint to it? To repaint it from, it was a red truck, so I had to make it, the corporate colors for these guys was yellow. Mm. So I had to make it yellow. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, the, the only catch I have is you got to pay me a deposit of 1000 for me to buy what I need to fix your truck. He says, how do I trust you? 
you are just a young man and how do I give you a thousand pula? I said, okay, give me your most trusted individual. We go together to buy what I need and in four days you will have this truck tr transformed, tr transformed to your corporate colors. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when, I, when they did that, I did the, that first truck. He was so happy. He paid me 5,000 pula and then wrote off the 1,000 advance he had given wow. because I had done a great job and he gave me three more trucks. Wow. Yeah, then my vision to do auto repairs was really... Became a reality. Yeah, it became a, reali a reality and uh, the rest is history. During this time, as I was running the, um, the uh, initial phase of the Webbs Motors Group, I then went to school. I've, I studied computers at Data Point. There was a, data, a, a college called Data Point next to CID South mm -hmm. in Khaboroni. And um, I did my first diploma there. Then, then diploma in what? In, in computer, computer studies. Yeah, yeah. Completely different from um, what I was doing, uh, mm -hmm. running businesses. Then I nested the business until it was very successful. Insurance companies giving me business, the, or most of the white folks giving me business, the government of Botswana giving me, so I've been supported a lot by the complete Botswana society, including most of the embassies in, in Botswana, Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, United States. So we've, we've, we've done it all in the automotive sector. Let me just stop you there and ask you about the actual vocational training to become good at this. Where did that take place and how did you go about that one? Um, my brother had a business like this uh, before, so once in a while I would just go and help. But for me, uh, it's not about the skill in my hands. It's about looking at an opportunity and get then putting the right resources human resources and the techn techn technology machines mm -hmm. to get the, 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 the right job done. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And um, because I'm not a qualified panel beater, neither am I a mechanic, neither am I an, any, an electrician. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm none of those. So, but I was able to put together human resources to get, to get the job done. And so it means you hired the best and the brightest exactly. in the field. <laughs> the right and resources. Then, yeah, and, yes. then, and then the right human resources. That's right. And, and um, um, why Web Motors with two Bs? I was young when I started this business. Mm. And um, the time, you know, to take you back a little bit, when I finished my A-levels in Zimbabwe, um, I had always wanted to do business. So they had given me an opportunity to study at the University of Zimbabwe for free on a grant basis, uh, um, Bachelor of Science uh, degree, Bachelor of Science degree, a common one. And I didn't want the lifestyle that the, my lecturer, my teachers at secondary looked like. I say, I don't want this kind of qualification. I wanted to do business and uh, surely I, I got into business and um, um, when I realized that I was lagging in some of the principles of business, I then went, I enrolled with the UNISA mm -hmm. for uh, BBA, Bachelor of Business Administration, completed that, and then I took um, a master's degree with Wales. Um, all these on, um, on um, long on distance learning because I really wanted, I didn't have the time to go mm. and sit in a class. Yeah, yeah. yes. And, and why did you uh, choose automotives as a niche? What attracted you to that field? I have um, a passion for uh, fixing automotive products. And God willing, I may get into the manufacture thereof mm. going forward. Is that the long-term ambition? One of them. Okay. Many uh, young entrepreneurs will be looking at you 30 years later fairly successful um, and we'll be asking themselves what are the key ingredients what is the secret sauce what are the secrets of success what would be your response to such a question um, my response to that is multifaceted but um, um, what pleases clients is when you do whatever you do with passion and you pay attention to detail 
and you respect people's time, you will be successful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's exactly how we have grown from one of the humblest institutions to a, a good brand in the market. Okay. Yes. How long did it take for the company to stabilize? It took us uh, about, uh, look, when, where we started, we started in the um, uh, white community. And uh, because of that, most of the friends, Mr. Bosch's friends, mm. this guy called all his friends to say, come and see a miracle boy. And uh, so his place, we were doing it next to uh, Budiba Country Club in, in Mohoditsane. Yes. That place was packed with his friend's cars for repairs. And within a few weeks, he says, no, you, you, you just get out of here. Uh, you, are, you are now causing mm. too much commotion in this place because all his friends were bringing their vehicles. Mm. That's when I, I moved from there to Old Pule Funeral. Mm -hmm. in, in uh, Hale Selassie and uh, I was renting there the person that from whom I was renting saw the uh, the the hustling and bustling of clients Botswana the white folks the Indian folks coming through and uh, he says look I want to do the same business so get out of here <laughs> so they kicked me out that's when I went to the building yeah, uh, G that, West. In, in G West. That's where you were for the longest. For the longest. Maybe term. 20 years, if I'm not mistaken. More than 20 years. Mm. That's mm. right. Yeah, I found you there and you left me there still, in terms of one of our, our major warehouses there. Now, you, you, you alluded to the fact that uh, you came uh, to Botswana on your own. What attracted you to Botswana? Why would a 21 year old? come all the way to start a business? Um, I am a believer, I am a Christian. And to some extent, when I moved into Botswana, Botswana was not that vibrant. Most Botswana were go attending school in Zimbabwe. Most Botswana were shopping in Bulawayo and some, some in Especially Arari. Especially some, f the e ones from Francistown. Exactly. Even from here, mm -hmm. uh, Havaroni, they would go shopping there. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, Zimbabwe was still so much strong. vibrant and strong mm. during that time. But uh, when I chose to come here, um, I had just read about Botswana. I didn't know anything. I didn't know Botswana. I didn't have any friends. Mm. When I came here, I slept at the station on a wrapped on a cardboard box because oh. I didn't have enough money. Mm. So I slept at the station. And the following day, that's when I met the, the, the I, I traveled around and I met the the, uh, the Bosch family. Okay. And that's uh, how fate took me to where. I put. So my attraction to Botswana at the time was like, just like an inspiration mm. because my coming here has made a, a great trek of my family and friends to come and join me in in this uh, in this uh, in this market yeah yes let's talk a little bit about mentorship um, who do you have any mentors who are they and how did they mentor you I have got a couple of mentors uh, the uh, the um, the greatest uh, of them being Mr. Muni uh, of, of Trans. Transaf. I know he's my mentor too. Yeah, um, I he actually talk about it in my book. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll you'll enjoy that part. <laughs> I've I've spoken about in uh, about him also in my book. I wrote a book during the lockdown. Oh, I didn't want to sit down, so I wrote a book. Um, okay, I'd yeah. like to grab a copy. Uh, it was for a beginner. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so, yeah, um, he, he is my greatest mentor, and um, I wish I can uh, um, continue to suck serious wisdom from him. Um, and I'm glad that I have met you. <laughs> I hope you will also mentor me going forward. <laughs> yeah, we'll mentor one another. Thank you. How did Mr. Mooney mentor you exactly? Um, Mr. Mooney had a, f how we met, he had a, fr he had a friend whose car was not he was in love with his uh, Camry um, so Mr. Mooney came over to Webb's Motors my branch in Block 3 and um, uh, for to fix his friend's car when 
he heard about the fact that I was training orphans. By the way, I, when I started a training outfit, automotive training outfit, having looked at the demographics of the people that are in the automotive sector, we realized the majority of the good technicians in this country, the uh, majority of them are foreign. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create a critical mass of local youth to participate in the automotive industry. So he had, Mr. Mooney had that I had taken 31 orphans and vulnerable children and given them free education, free training in automotive. Um, within your workshop. With, within my new college, and which is um, linked to the, to the, to the workshop. Mm -hmm. We have a training, our um, training environment that is very different from the rest of everybody else. Because mm -hmm. when we do training in, in, in that out outfit, we in a week, we learn uh, three days theory, three days practi uh, practice from uh, Monday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, by the time a, a, a trainee finishes, they already have an experience. Mm -hmm. So with that, when Mr. Mooney heard that I was at the college, which was just in the, in, in, in the adjacent building, um, he then said, I want to see this young man. He didn't know me, and I didn't know him either. Mm. And uh, he says, I want to see this young man. He waited. I was in a meeting with the ministry because uh, the ministry also uh, was very impressed with the fact that I was giving free training to orphans and vulnerable children. So we spent almost two hours. Then Mr. Mooney waited there for that long to see me. Oh really? And when I, when I, uh, um, um, uh, that my meeting went so long with him. He, uh, no, with without. Oh, while with he was ministry, waiting. Whilst yeah. he's waiting, then he left and a note to say, "Can you tell Webster that I've been waiting for about two hours to see him? Uh, if he can please follow me to my office when he finds an opportunity. When I came, I did follow him. That's when he told me." his history, and I told him my history, and he says, are you willing to learn from me? I said, by all means, mm. yes, okay. absolutely, yes. Oh, that seems like a great connection. Yes. And he's a good teacher, eh? He's always Indeed. willing to teach absolutely. and share. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, talk a little bit about that training center. What inspired it and what form did it take at its infancy? The training facility, um, the vision for my vision before I expire, I want to make a difference in Southern Africa in, to train people in the automotive sector. And by that, my vision is to have create a critical mass of technicians in the automotive sector so that uh, some of them can work within the um, uh, industry, others can now develop components manufacturing in the automotive sector and all the things, the tenets that are associated with automotives. Mm -hmm. So my vision is to develop a center of excellence that is born on the vision of a synergy of theory and practice. And by this, the vision is to develop a very, very large training center for the Botswana market, the Sadiq market, and actu actually the, the entire globe, but looking in the, into the Southern African uh, uh, region, uh, we need serious industrialization. If people are going to industrialize, they will need technically skilled people. So the, my, the, my vision is to um, equip that, those skills to the youth of, the, of, of Botswana and the Southern African region. So what uh, has it taken shape? How many trainers are out there? What is the form it's taken now? We've, uh, we have uh, acquired this, the services of highly skilled, I think the cream de la cream of uh, the, uh, the, tra the, the automotive trainers in Southern Africa. Uh, for one reason, when we now applied into the industry, we realized that like for, for in panel beating, for example, in this country, I think we only have three individuals with um, 
bachelor's degree in, in panel beating. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very difficult to, to then get to train some, uh, to, to find a person to train somebody at a diploma level. So these are some of the things that we have, uh, we have found, but we do have some of the um, highest qualified individuals in our, in our institution. We are actually training as we speak um, in that synergized form. We are one of the first to really um, offer that kind of synergy. And then we reduce the training period. If you look at the brigades in the country, they take four years to train an individual to uh, NCC level, I think. Mm -hmm. But ourselves, we are at um, uh, fifth level, set, uh, uh, level five in terms of the NCQF in Botswana. Mm -hmm. And we take 12 months. But our, the good thing is our graduates, they don't, they don't roam, roam in the streets. Because they have the skills. They mm -hmm. have the skill. So they get hired immediately. Mm -hmm. um, the moment they are finishing, we calls are coming through. And Does we that mean you compress four years worth of education into 12 months? Into 12 months, yes. So it's intensive training that is relevant. You see, sometimes people have syllabuses that are speaking to, you know, condensers and things like that, carburetors. They are no longer there, but a kid goes through some of those things. Mm. Now, we are giving modern... Uh, training systems that speaks to the vehicles you are driving mm. at Now, the, yes. the highly um, you know, uh, computerized versions right. that we see today. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Now, what are the exact automotive fields or specializations that you are training on? We are training pe uh, um, individuals in automotive um, body repair and refini uh, refinishing technology. Mm -hmm. That includes panel beating and spray painting and stuff like that. Automotive collision estimation. We are the first institution to offer, to create a diploma in Southern Africa in collision estimation. These guys are the ones that, are, that appraise accident damaged vehicles, whether it's a write-off, whether it's worth, worth of repair, how much it will cost and stuff like that. Um, um, uh, and uh, then we have automotive elect electrical and electronics technology as well as um, mechanical technology and heavy plant. Oh, yeah. that's very interesting. That's right. So um, where is it physically and how does one enroll? Our institution is at plot 22076 in um, um, just next to CTM. And, uh, but our students, when doing practicals, they, are, they, are doing, they, are, they, are, they attend practicals in our uh, very uh, technically solid institution at Webb's Motors mm -hmm. near uh, just next to uh, to to Orange here mm -hmm. uh, near the bus ring. So our students will spend three days at uh, at the uh, in the campus and three days in uh, doing real practical work. And it's, uh, this is a going concern. They are not doing models. Yeah, they are working on your car. We do a lot of CEOs, yeah. uh, CEO vehicles, and uh, so you, we get our students to yeah. in, uh, to to learn in that uh, in environment. I must say that the brand Webs Webs Motors is strong in this community, and um, rightly or wrongly, I somehow associated it with a, um, a white individual because of the name. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it yeah. was I named that business in my in my names because of. Uh, it's your first name. Uh, that makes, it, yeah, yeah, it makes it, perfect sense. I was a, I was a young kid, so yeah. I would not have named it Webs Motors. I would have named it elsewhere. No, but if it, it was today. No, no, no. But it makes perfect sense. All right. Now, what would you say uh, the challenges and setbacks that you may have encountered, both in the automotive industry and in the t training industry, so to speak? In the automotive industry, we've had quite a number of challenges. Um, COVID meant that we were we we could not operate for almost operate properly for almost two years because uh, when those lockdowns came into being, uh, it meant we we were far far behind. Now, by the time COVID um, waned. Uh, our main stakeholders who are the insurance companies 
um, changed from the modus operandi that we had uh, um, enjoyed over the years, where we would you get your vehicle smashed, we get we caught we get it appraised and authorized for repairs and we purchase parts, put them putting a markup of twenty five percent. Now the insurance company says they have lost so much money through COVID and so they decide to now buy parts mm. and supply parts to the in, uh, to us as repairers and we just simply get a five percent five percent handling fee and labor only. Mm. It means if your if your your monthly uh, sales would be, was around one million or one point two or three million, mm-hmm. whatever it is it has been reduced to below a million. Mm-hmm. And what does that do to a business? It's, it's, it's a huge challenge. It slows it down considerably. Yeah. It's a huge challenge. We had to, yeah, it, it, it was really very, it's really painful. We still are in that space as we speak. And you're not recovering? Slight recovery. Mm. So in the automotive sector, that's one of the biggest challenge we have had. Um, that in, um, our main stakeholders decided to um, procure parts for us. Mm. And sometimes that the procurement also has challenges because um, uh, they are not as, uh, as um, experienced as we would be in selecting in the right selec- parts. In getting the right parts. You mm-hmm. would receive wrong parts maybe three, four times. Mm. So your lead time, your turnaround time becomes uh, when you, you used to get a vehicle finished within one year, uh, within one, you know, one week. Mm. You may take a month or two or sometimes three. We have got one that is, is getting to two years. And largely because of because the wrong, of, wrong part yeah, system. Uh, yeah, because of uh, some, you know. Can't wrong. you engage them? Can't you form an association to engage the insurance companies to, to revert? To we are in that process. We are in the process of forming an association. But um, like I'm saying, it's one of the biggest challenges we've had. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And then on the training side, it took time for um, um, for the biggest customer in Botswana businesses, most of the businesses is the government. And uh, uh, when we offered this training to the market, a lot of parents would want their, 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 their children to come to our training facility. But, you know, training people in automotive products is expensive. Now, most parents are used to getting government fund the training of their children, mm-hmm. particularly here in Botswana. Uh, in our, when we first opened, our biggest number of children, uh, as, as students was coming from um, outside Botswana. Mm-hmm. And that's a misnomer. But that, that is the reality that we have, we have had to go through. But right now, recent of recent, um, we uh, government uh, has realized the value of our training so they are giving us by direct pro- procurement uh, a number of students. Mm. Right now we're training, I think about uh, 16 from uh, selected a boy and a girl from, from uh, dis- all the districts of the in the in the in, in the in 16 districts in the country. Yeah. So you currently have how many students overall? Um, we we are in the um, um, just just we are shy of 120. Mm. Yes. So that looks like it's a substantial um, operation. What's it the name of the institution? Kitso, Kitso International College. Okay. Yes. For those who don't know, you chose Kitso because it means knowledge. That's right. Or was there a deeper reason than that? Uh, it's knowledge. Mm. Now, the m- our tagline is a synergy of theory and practice. Mm. So whatever we train, we make sure you uh, there is that uh, synergy between the training aspect um, the, and the practical aspect. Mm. Everything has to be to have an, a practical cont- component mm. so that a kid, when a, a trainee, by the time they gra- graduate, they have experience mm. in the field of training. Do you think that your methodology can somehow influence how our brigades and other institutions are doing their training? I really think so. And um, I believe. Um, at some point, um, 
the Ministry of Education will see mm -hmm. value in our form of training and maybe, um, you know, arrange a triple P kind of an arrangement where we can work together within the brigade system mm. and produce fit for purpose students. And you, when you're explaining it, uh, the only gentleman who comes to mind is Van Rensbeck in the old days who came up with a system called Education for Production. That's right. To me, from the way you are explaining it, this is the next best thing to Education for Production. Is that what it is? It is, it is indeed. I heard about um, Van Ransbeck. I came here when he, <laughs> I think he had, he had left. I, I only yeah. developed this looking at the reality, what, what we need in the market. Um, then we created this outfit. Mm, yeah. And then a lot of people have spoken about Van, Van Ransbeck. I, I, I do not know that. Yeah, shit he talked about that a lot. Yes. Um, now... It's an international college, and you are receiving students from where? What makes it international? We uh, so far, we, we've got students from uh, as far as Nigeria, Kenya, Zambia, Malawi, Zimbabwe, uh, Namibia, and, uh, uh, and um, uh, uh, Botswana. Okay. We have uh, uh, one so far from India. Wow, that's <laughs> fantastic. That's right. Any challenges associated with accreditation? of not just the modules but also the courses that's one of the the challenges we've had to face um when we because automotive in uh, automotive engineering is an engineering uh, subject uh, we did not want to continue in the uh, with what was happening in the country where there is um the engineering regulatory body is wind away from Botswana Qualifications Authority. So I was instrumental, one of the pe people that really advocated to say for all the automotive uh, qualifications, by the way, all the five automotive qualifications on the portal in uh, uh, at BQA are a function of our, mm -hmm. they were developed by Kito International College. Wow. Yes. And we paid for for it for mm -hmm. those things, uh, both at HRD at um, uh, at um, HRMC. No, no, no. It's yeah, at yeah. Uh, e engineering ERB. Yeah, ERB. We paid for those. Mm -hmm. We started by paying those that were sent to South Africa to mm -hmm. Engineering Council of South Africa, and then we paid also he, um, for those that were then finally um, appraised by the ERB body in Botswana. Okay. But yeah. You've started on the subject that I was about to ask you about, which is your triumphs and successes. Here's your chance to blow your own trumpet or the trumpet of your businesses and tell us the highlights, the successes and the accomplishments. Thank you very much. In terms of the uh, college itself, um, it was very difficult to, to move from where we were a service provider in the automotive sector to be a trainer. Uh, we had to learn ropes that, that we were really alien to us and we made a lot of mistakes but in the process uh, we were able to get the accreditation. Some of them took like the engineering programs. We applied for them in uh, 2019 and they were only accredited in 2020, uh, early 2023. So you can Im imagine the amount of time, lead time it takes for someone to then celebrate that kind of success but that they are now approved erb endorsed and whatever we're doing uh, is in line with is aligned to bqa as well as uh, erb and we are really uh, happy about that wow and the fact that uh, for the first time this year government uh, has realized the value or the importance of our our offerings in terms of training they have um, uh, uh, given us students um, um, uh, through direct pro uh, procurement, I think they do see value mm -hmm. of our, what uh, our training model, and um, they have hinted that uh, they have looked at what we have done in the very few months. Mm -hmm. They intend to double the, the numbers that they have given us, and it's really 
uh, very uh, very good news. So that's yeah. it, another tribe. That's beautiful. Uh, for Webs Motors, yes, um, uh, I, we were able. That business has been able to uplift me from uh, a guy that had forty five bucks to a person who has made the difference in the lives of both Botswana, the international community, my family, and of course, I was able to 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 get a beautiful wife. Uh, <laughs> Botswana. To, yes, yeah. of course, I grew up in Congratulations. Botswana. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So this would be a highlight. Yeah, that's a, that's a big highlight uh, because it makes me st uh, it has made me stable and yeah. uh, you know as a fa as a husband and as a father. Yeah, yes. this is fantastic. Yeah. Now, does um, the source of inspiration for you does the faith play a part? If so, to what extent? Um, let me simplify the question by saying, where does the inspiration come from? I said that in my in the beginning that. Um, I am a Christian, and I used to, uh, whenever I speak something, whatever I spoke, it would come in. Uh, uh, it would uh, it it would manifest, and I wish it continues. Mm. I am a Christian, and I believe um, when you ask God, some things may delay a little bit, but God is faithful. Mm. He gives you the desires of your heart. Even the training that government has given sounds me sounds to me like you're quoting Matthew seven seven, and Matthew seven eight. Absolutely. If you ask, can you, and it you shall receive. be granted. You receive. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Indeed, that is what has happened to me, and so I'm asking that um, the issue of a center of excellence. Mm -hmm. I need to achieve that, and possibly by His grace enter into the money from from the designing division of that center of excellence we want to design automobiles mm. um, in, a, in, in an alignment to his excellency's quest for electrical vehicles in this country that that has been in a manifesto for the last five years what is happening there is, is it is it something that is progressing or it was just a political talk? Um, these things are possible. You see, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. We are living in a global society and it is possible to link nuggets from Germany, nuggets from China, nuggets from wherever. Mm and produce something that is uniquely Botswana. And so I believe if it is not done by, by my group, mm. one person will do that mm. in the not distant future. So yeah. it's not a very difficult thing. It's very, it's doable. As we had, it, there was Hyundai in here. It's a question of talking to the, uh, putting the right System uh, systems in place, in place and mm. things things should be able to work out yeah. and i believe by god's grace one one day something like that will happen in botswana let me also ask you about because you're talking about mindset and it's fashionable these days to talk about mindset change and we're always being told that he is asking for some form of transmutation uh, transformation mentally are change, change, are change, change. Yes. What are your observations uh, on that, and does it seem as if it's happening? Um, we see it happening um, because in our institution mm. recently, we participated in the um, training of uh, a whole ministry's team members on basic computing skills. The, pre the president is talking about digitalization. There is no way a country can can um, accomplish di digitalization without training the people behind those. And so, just two weeks back, we trained over 58 individuals. Um, some of them very training them to do what on uh, digital digital uh, basic di uh, computer computer skills. Mm -hmm. So we. Uh, you know, training people upgrade their 
computing skills. Mm. So that's a that's one of the elements. Those are the building uh, building blocks towards changing the mindset. Very few, very soon we may now hear that people don't need a photo a, a, a certified photocopy of things mm. because things will be in the in a di- digital form, mm. and you'll need people that are able to run to. To, 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 to work with the digital mm. and to work in the digital space. Yes. So it's happening. Okay. I believe it is happening. Though it's not happening in, in a lightning skill, uh, scale, but I believe uh, with a little bit of pushing, uh, there, w- there may be massive changes in the not distant future. That's very, very encouraging. Yes. yes. Now, you're originally from Zimbabwe and uh, even government is talking about you know, opening borders some more and things like that. Um, any chance that the, your institution would find its roots there and spread its tentacles further than Botswana? Uh, it is our intention to train people in the SADC region. Like I said, we want to build a center of excellence and we are going to export. Uh, Botswana qualifications uh, is far ahead of some of the uh, 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 education systems within SADC. I think it's uh, uh, through when I check my research, uh, Mauritius is, 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 is Botswana must be number two to Mauritius in terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, addressing the issues that need to be addressed in the ed- education space. So we believe that uh, Kito International being headquartered in, in Botswana will have its tentacles in and all these other countries. We have, uh, we have a lot of inquiries from Namibia, from uh, Eswatini, mm-hmm. uh, from Mozambique, and uh, Zambia lately. So w- we believe we, we will get into you know, the international, in those international things. And it's a nice thing that they are, com- that they are talking about opening the borders um, for free movement of persons. Yeah. It becomes easier. You don't need now need a permit to go and uh, attend school in Zimbabwe you, 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 or in South Africa, you just go and attend school mm-hmm. and pay fees. Um, so I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, the future is bright. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. There used to be a tendency in the past, uh, you know, when a child comes out of secondary school, parents push them towards uh, formal jobs. I'm talking lawyers, doctors, dentists, and those things. Now, it seems to me that you had, you have a huge amount of success going to jobs where you use your hands, use other parts of your um, your body besides your mind. And I wanted to to find out from you what the question that I normally get asked. Oh, you forgot to ask him: Is there money in this field? Because if people are going to stop from be be encouraged not just to be lawyers to go into other areas. They have to know that there is a, a significant hum- income and generating possibility in that field. So, uh, my long question, let me shorten it to say, where is the mula? Where is the money? Uh, in the automotive sector, besides the service services like uh, um, servicing cars, electrics, and panel beating, and spray painting, and all that, uh, when you train people, when you give people skills in automotive sector, you you will find that uh, there is a wide industry that is untapped here in Botswana. So far, the components manufacturing division of this country, I think there is only maybe one or two. Two, we may have Hannes Botswana and Krumbek doing harnesses, and maybe another company that is manufacturing bush guards and roll bars and stuff like that. But you just go to our ne- next door neighbor here in South Africa. There are a lot of components that they are, that they are manufacturing there, mm. and you look at the demographic, who owns those things that there in South Africa. The majority of them are the uh, the from the um, uh, white community. Mm. We must change that and say, let's do it here in Botswana. Mm-hmm. Let's manufacture headlights for for automotives and sh- ship them to Germany, ship them to China. Mm-hmm. We must not cons- be consumers of other European, yeah. American, 
uh, Chinese, we must be producers, not consumers. Indian. We must be able to produce our own. Yeah. And how do you do that? You address it by getting people into that. There is serious money. Now, for you now to see whether where is the mullah, you have asked a question, where is the money? Hmm. If you now check the guys that are doing just Krumbeg here, check them out. Okay. How much money are they making when they are making harnesses for the Mercedes-Benz and VW? Check hmm. how much money they are making just here. Just ask this. There is serious money. Hmm. But besides the big, that, that big money we are um, addressing right now with the manufacturing in entities, and hmm. Botswana, mind you, has... Uh, SEDA and um, NDB and whatnot that, that are willing to give you serious money mm. to start the manufacturing uh, division. But for an individual that has trained in automotive sector, I'm telling you he's so much different from a guy who has a legal de a law degree because a guy with a law degree, it depends on whether he gets employment or not, but with a guy that has a technical skill, when he is driving, you may, you've seen people with bonnets open. Mm. No matter how new your car is, <laughs> it can have issues. Yes, it can, it can have, have issues. Yeah, it can have issues. Mm. And the, these are the opportunities. Somebody who, who knows the electrics simply says, I'm checking it out, out for you. Maybe it's a very small thing, but you need that skill. Yeah. That small, small, small thing, that he, will small tell thing. You, he, he will tell you that um, the, for, for the, the, the job that I have done here in the five minutes, I need 1.5. Mm. Uh, he's better than a guy with a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. That's, those, those are some of the things that I'm talking about yeah. to say. If you are skilled in, uh, in using your hands, mm. you have a better chance of uh, having a, um, a lifestyle that is not as bad mm. as people. There's serious unemployment in this country right now mm -hmm. for people that have got the, uh, the other trades. Uh, they've come out of universities and others are coming to our institution but he's got a degree from wherever, but he's coming to learn on a certificate because he wants the skill mm. to be able to do something to feed himself. And obviously coming with a degree can be a huge advantage because they can then adapt easily. Very easily. To whatever. Yeah we, we have, yeah, we have a number of um, people that are coming who have degrees mm. and are coming to, to uh, into our certificate programs. Yeah. Uh, just to, you know, beef up their qualification and then they are able to live off this where they are using their hands yeah yes and the big craze now internationally is ai artificial intelligence is there a sense in which you are incorporating it into your training or or it's not something you get into as yet into in our our, our we with something that we looking at uh, we like we said our baby, our college is uh, is in its in its infancy Mm -hmm. Our aim is to give futuristic programs, learning programs, to our students because if you like uh, the AIs, you will be left behind. So we got to be f futuristic. Mm. This is why we're saying even in the design phase of our 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 automotive uh, sector, uh, our aim is to instill um, to also uh, make use of the ai capabilities mm -hmm. yes it's something that is that we we've really designed so that we need to have a futuristic mm. um, uh, institution okay yes all right um i've written a book it's called nuggets of grit grit really is that sense of persistence that sense of uh you know never say die attitude you know some people call it uh, perseverance uh, and and resilience um, are you able to say a thing or two about that and the importance of having that that particular development, that grit? Um, and in answering that question, you could perhaps give like an example or two in your own life so that the viewer can understand better. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I would, from my experience, uh, somebody has got to be focused. You'll get scratched if you're hunting uh, you may have thorns pricking into your feet even if you are wearing boots sometimes you can be scratched all over what is important is to look at the end your vision where you are looking at there is a lot of mud along the way so you one needs that certain le serious level of persistence because if you are easily discouraged success 
will not be near you. Mm. So there is need for somebody to remain resilient. Uh, that grit is required. Mm. In uh, uh, for me, uh, there are times when things were really not that easy. Even for, at the college, um, at one point, we government had said we are giving you because of what you have done. Uh, to train 31 OVC to the tune of um, um, 1.3 million for a new new college. Uh, they, they come to me and say, we're giving you 500. St- what is your capacity? I said 500. We, they say, we're giving you 500 students. Now get ready. Uh, now for you to train 500 uh, students, you need a mass resources. Mm-hmm put all the resources we say they and they tell me within two weeks we are bringing the students in this field in this field in this they gave me f- four fields so get ready so you hire lecturers and whatnot and everything you get this material the all the resources necessary to train 500 people mm-hmm. and then that everything dries and you push it two three years nothing has happened you know what that does to you if you are easily uh, discouraged you close shop Mm. But we did not close shop. We held on, and now we begin to see the results of that resilience. Um, so you're getting paid for that resilience now. Exactly. And if you had given up sooner... Zero. Zero. All the effort would have gone to zero. Mm. So it's important to uh, remain focused and sometimes drink water when everybody is drinking the nice stuff. Mm. during the waiting period and that's what um, we have done that's how what do you have how do you know to wait much longer for instance you could easily have given up after a year but you waited f- two to three years before things started how does one calibrate their mindset to be able to wait that long um, I think when y- it, it, this thing has to be coupled with faith and faith is believing things that are not as if they are Mm. so you believe you have a hundred students when you have got three it's hard but you know god is faithful Mm. one day things will happen and things are beginning to happen as we speak wow yes that's very very encouraging yeah now i want to talk about uh, the future Um, i want you to paint for us a vision uh, two sets of visions. One for Webb's Motors, two, two, two decades down the line, a decade or two, and one vision for uh, for Kito, uh, one or two decades down down the line. Thank you very much. Um, for Webb's Motors, uh, I prayed about it. That look, um, when I did my MBA, um, I learned about I learned about scaling. Uh, and internationalizing a business. We didn't even know you have an MBA. You forgot to mention that, but but I'm glad you did. <laughs> okay, I, yeah. Well, I, I got an MBA from Wales. Um, when when I looked at uh, that aspect, I said, that then how do I apply my MBA skill within the Webs Motors group? And one night, a voice told me that franchise this business. So I've developed a franchise that is accepted by the state. It has ac- accept, accepted by all the ministries in the country, the, from transport, youth, uh, um, to the insurance companies in the country, to these car, car, car hire companies like well, Avis, Europe Car, um, the banks. So we're looking at um, empowering youth in Botswana. Uh, that, that is our first phase. We want to empower the youth by giving the, uh, 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 providing the franchise where we handhold them and say, this is how you are going to work on this vehicle from start to finish. And we have identified about 10 centers within Botswana to, put, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to establish the franchises. And it looks like we have found... Um, uh, we have found off-takers, so it's something that will be happening uh, within, with, within the next couple of months. 
And we have also then looked at the markets within uh, the SADC region. Um, we have had inquiries from Angola, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Zambia. So our aim is to move in the, into those territories. Mm -hmm. To begin with, most uh, all these countries that I've mentioned, their vehicles when they are in Botswana, each time they have situations, they come to the web motors. motors yeah. So they know the quality that we, 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 we offer. Now, if we put that in their country, it empowers their, the local community and so business grows. Mm -hmm. So that is the vision for web Wow, motors. sounds very exciting. It's, uh, thank you very much. Mm. Um, but um, in, uh, um, that's a component of it. The other component is the manufacturing of electrical vehicles. Our aim is to, from the center of excellence, there is a design, a design activity that handles the, the, the design phase. Um, is something that is at a very advanced stage. We have already signed a memorandum of agreements and uh, with uh, international uh, EV manufacturers to look at establishing here in Botswana, working together yeah, talking with... Talking to Tesla. Not exactly. <laughs> others, yeah. We are talking to others. Yeah. Um, yeah, the biggest market so far of most things that are really very interesting within the southern uh, hemisphere, we must link up with our southern hemisphere brothers. Mm. As long as there is that infusion of um, the international community. Mm. So we are in that space as we speak. Um, our aim short term before end of this year a version of an electric vehicle is on the way wow, wow. yes this is so exciting man. yeah and i'm sure we'll be happy to invite you back once that happens it, thank you very much yeah. really happy. so really the vision for kizo and webs they're inextricably intertwined this is why i spoke about a center of excellence mm. because kizo's training is modeled with practicality and the practicality the practical element must be in a going concern sbu mm -hmm. and in this in this in this case our students will learn their skills within uh, the web, webs motors group mm -hmm. yeah. kids will offer the training there is that uh, there is that memorandum of understanding between kids and webs motors mm -hmm. where and the way our aim so far is to build a center of excellence where you have a division of the repairs uh, section, a division of design, design, division of training, each of these being SBUs. I get the sense from just that comment that you are very finicky and choosy on the quality of trainers and the quality of lecturers that you get. Do you want to say something about that? You, you see, for you to... Um, produce good quality you need to the ingredients must have good quality there is no way you use mediocre me, uh, mediocre stuff to produce something really nice so our aim is to look uh, we always look at the skills of the individuals we we uh, work with to produce what we aim to produce this is why even in, uh, in the webs motors group we are really accepted by the market because we produce the right quality, and we doing that that as well in the uh, within the training area. We're looking for the right quality, quality lecturers, people with good, real good, technical skills, who are able to then impart good technical skills to the trainees, so that these guys they become meaningful members of society. Mm. Yes. Well, I have to then. Um give you an opportunity now to ask me a question um, before we wrap up so you can shoot. Uh, Mr. Mukhube, mm -hmm. what what have you uh, exercised to achieve the level of success you have? Uh, you know, from the beginning to where you, to the level that you are at at this moment in time. 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've picked 10 ingredients, which I spell out in the book. Uh, there's a chapter on it. But of those 10, I think there are two that are most important, one of which you've mentioned, which is, in fact, we've touched on both of them, which is faith and grit. I've been fortunate in the sense that I've been, I'm a fourth generation Seventh-day Adventist. So I've been brought up by parents, especially by mother, who are very much uh, pro-faith, who are very, very hungry for education. And they instilled some of those uh, traits, or if you like, those uh, uh, characteristics in me. And so faith, not just in the Hebrews uh, 11 type of sense, but in a bigger sense of believing that whatever I'm undertaking, whether it's business, it's worth it in the end. And that not depending on what other people are saying or believing, but choosing to persist so that other people will find you as you forge ahead. So that is one component. The other one, I don't want to spoil the book again for you, it's grit. And, um, you know, grit is defined by people like Angela Duckworth as... Uh, the most important ingredient for success because um, it, it, it eliminates issues of chance, it eliminates issues of, um, of the economy and other factors that we normally rush to as an excuse for our failure. If there's grit, it makes up for everything else and it eliminates all the other excuses. So that's the best way I can answer your questions. I hope I've answered it. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. um, uh, the last one, mm. what really Im inspires you in life? Um, I'm, I'm inspired by the recognition that I have a purpose. Um, even just for this podcast, we talk about to enthuse, to inspire, to energize, and to empower. So I always look at these four traits in the context of my other uh, values and say, am I living today? Have I, have I activated those four traits? So it's like my uh, north, east, west, and south that they guide me, those four points. So if I'm able to do that in a given day, uh, I believe that I'm fulfilling my purpose. Wow. Yeah, on wow. this planet. Wow. All right. Right. Now, here's a, a, a camera for you to look at, sir. There's a viewer there who needs words of inspiration uh, from you as we conclude our conversation. Dear viewer, um, no matter what situation you face in life, if you've got a vision and uh, you can see something clearly in your mind, do whatever it takes to, reach, to, to scale that mountain. Sometimes it may not be that easy, but it is possible. So when you have um, a vision, do what is necessary to scale the mountain until you get there. That's what I gotta say. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been a brilliant, uh, brilliant guest. Oh, we forgot to share all your contact details, even on social media. Go ahead. Okay, Ma, the, uh, the, the college is Kit Kitso International College, and uh, on, uh, on Facebook, is, um, uh, on, uh, on the website is www.kitsocollege.ac.bw, and um, uh, our location, we are located in Khaboroni uh, at plot 22076. Uh, and um, with Webb's Motors Group, we repair cars from Khaburoni, Tsabong, Mahalape, and we can tow your vehicles from anywhere, where, whether it's in Kasane, Maun, Kana, even in Jobek. We sometimes take some of these from Jobek, as far as Jobek, Harare, mm. Zambia. So we are able to do um, vehicles for uh, the Webb's Motors Group. Um, I think that's what we... Did, and my you, number, did you mention a landline? Uh, my number, you can call, uh, always get me on this. I can link uh, everything else. The, uh, my number is 7130-1028. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.